This is Armando. This video was created as part of the Hungry Microbiome Project, which I made at CSIRO. In this video, we'll talk about carcinogenesis of colon cancer, and we'll look at it at a molecular level and see what kind of mutations occur along the DNA that will result in cancer of the colon. So we begin by looking at normal colon cells that have their blood supply. Here, where the crypts are, stem cells will migrate up, giving rise to new colon cells. If we look into the genetic material of one of these stem cells, their genetic material is DNA, which is found in chromosomes. The DNA is all tangled up around histones. If we remove the histones, here we can see the DNA. In a normal colon cell, there is a balance between what's called histone acetylation and histone methylation. Histone acetylation means that there is a better access for transcription factors um, to the DNA. Histone methylation means that there is decreased access of, for transcription factors to the DNA. So there is repression. Therefore, if there is a lot of methylation, certain genes may not uh, be activated. So looking at the histones here, we have a balance between histone methylation, ME, and histone acetylation, AC. Now, an important enzyme to know is HDAC, which is histone deacetylase. This enzyme essentially removes an acetyl group from the histone. So here, the enzyme is removing the acetyl group from this histone. And HDAC um, is an important enzyme in um, decreasing access for transcription factors, essentially. Now, along the DNA, there are regions called promoter regions and non-promoter regions. Promoter regions are regions in the DNA that initiate transcription of particular genes, meaning the synthesis of RNA. Therefore, non-promoter regions are regions that contain no function, functional genes. In a normal cell, colon cell, there is approximately 70 to 80 percent methylation um, in non-promoter regions. But around the promoter regions, genes are usually unmethylated. And this is so there is better access for transcription factors to activate genes. And we will see the changes that occur in methylation as cancer develops. Now, in 80% of cases of colon carcinogenesis, there is an adenomatous polyposis coli gene mutation or APC gene mutation. The APC gene is essentially a tumor suppressor gene because normally it encodes for proteins involved in cell adhesion and transcription. This APC mutation can result in one of these stem cells to become a, a potentially cancerous. And so, as the abnormal cell, the potential cancer cell, moves up, it will begin dividing and dividing, creating a polyp, which is uh, usually a small benign growth. However, with more mutations, such as in 50 to 60 percent of colon cancer cases, there is activation of the KRAS oncogene, as well as more mutations of other tumor suppressor genes. Now, the KRAS gene normally controls cellular division. However, a mutation of the KRAS gene results in a KRAS oncogene, and thus cell proliferation. The cells will begin to proliferate. This, this will create an adenoma, which is a larger benign growth. During this time, as the cells keep dividing, there needs to be more blood supply in order to feed the growing tissue. 
So angiogenesis, which is formation and maturation of blood vessels, occur. It should be noted that from uh, when pot the potential cancerous cell, the abnormal cells, develop, there can be a mismatch a repair gene inactivation as well as hypermethylation occurring um, on the DNA. The mismatch repair gene normally repairs mutations that occur um, on the genes, in the genes. Hypermethylation silences genes. Both mismatch repair gene inactivation and hypermethylation can result in mutation rates that are a hundred time fold greater than mutation rates that occur in normal cells, which is a lot of mutations. A mutation in the TP53 gene tends to occur later in colon uh, carcinogenesis. This mutation uh, will cause resistance of cancer cells to apoptosis. So more cells will divide and less will die. This will cause a massive growth, which will cave in and keep growing, resulting in carcinoma, which is a malignant growth. Now that we're at this stage, let us look at the genetic material of this cancer cell. So here we have the chromosome again, the histone fibers and the histone, and then the DNA. The DNA, which has, remember, the promoter and non-promoter regions. In cancer cells, there is a disbalance between histone acetylation and histone methylation. So we see more methylated histones. Remember, methylation decreases access to transcription factors. One reason why we see more methylation is because of HDAC, the enzyme, which appear to be more active in colon cancer cells. So here, HDAC is removing all the um, acetyl groups on histones, resulting in more methylated histones. In colon cancer cells, we also see changes in DNA methylation. In promoter regions, for example, there is usually hypermethylation, particularly in tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes. This results in some of the mutations we, we talked about earlier. And in non-promoter region, there tends to be fewer methylation. So again, there is hypermethylation on promoter regions, which contributes to gene silencing and genomic instability, and it will affect apoptosis, DNA repair, and cell cycle control. And there tends to be a decrease in methylation on non-promoter regions, which essentially don't do anything. I hope you enjoyed this video on colon cancer carcinogenesis. Thank you for watching.